everyone, and welcome to another video dedicated to Photolab 9. Very exciting. And particularly, this one is going to be a quick one, also dedicated to the new local adjustments situation, which of course includes the new AI masking tool, and sort of looking at how we can combine that with other things to really cool effect. So I've got just two headshots here, plus their virtual copies that I've um, taken the, the work that I've already done off of. And I, I'm, what I want to correct here is that this backdrop ended up being quite flat. Basically, I normally like to put the backdrop back a little bit further and then throw a little light on it strategically. Gives it a little bit of shape and depth. In this case, the, I was in a really small space, couldn't do that. So the backdrop is a little bit flat across there, which I don't love. So I basically want to darken the outsides and, and not darken sort of here and not darken her. So that's where I'm at with that. I don't want to use the vignette tool because that would also darken her. So let's just go ahead and do this. Uh, just, I guess I should quickly say before I start that very little done to this. There's a touch of down exposure, a touch of downed highlights, and I've popped it into the DxO Portrait 1 for the color and tone rendering. And with this, because I want to darken the outsides, I'm not going to start with an AI mask. I'm going to use one in a minute, but I'm going to actually start with a control point. And I'll bring that over about here, and I'll just pop that on. And that's going to that's going to do its control point thing. So it's sort of selected this big round circle, and that's all good. And it's quite feathered, etc. And I'll leave all of that going on. But the trouble is, if I now draw that down, well, it's it's reducing the exposure on the place where the control point was but i actually want to reduce the exposure on everything else so i'm going to pop up here to this handy button which is called invert mask so i'll do that and boom now it's done that now it's darker on the outside and and it hasn't really impacted the exposure here in the center but that is impacting her a little bit so i'm going to want to protect her from that adjustment completely. So what I'm going to do now is employ, you guessed it, the AI mask, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to use the subject um, categories, and in this case I'll choose subject. And so now I've chosen that mask, and that mask is adding a darkening, so she's just got darkened, which is not what I want to do. I want to protect her from the darkening. And in order to protect her, I'm going to use this other button. So we've got two buttons here. We've got Invert Mask, and we've got Invert Shape. And I don't know, I almost feel like this language needs to be updated down the road, because I don't really feel like it's it's <laughs> the best language that could... And I don't know what the solution is. I don't, I don't have all the answers, but I just feel like it doesn't really tell the story of what it's doing. But basically, this is going to turn it into a minus. It's going to subtract. Yeah, so I was on my AI mask, I clicked the invert shape, and it turned it into a minus selection. So it's taken that away. So there we go. That's it. It's done. If I pop up here and I before and I after, it has given me the effect that I was after. So that is quite cool. Now, the other thing that I'll just quickly do, just because I can, is I'm going to come here and I'll do a new mask. So this, both of these items are part of mask number one because it includes anything that I add or subtract. It's kind of the whole formula, so to speak. So that's mask number one is my background. I could rename it if I wasn't a slow typer, um, but I'm not going to bother since I am a slow typer. And I'm put a new mask on. And on this new mask, I'm going to use AI tools. And what I want to select now is her face and her hair. And Let's see. So I can do this. And there's actually a benefit. I could just click on this here and I could click on this here and that would do the trick. But in fact, I'm going to come here and I'm going to go face and I'm going to go hair and I'm going to leave it at that. And the reason that I've done that is because now that's copy and pasteable. So anything that I do from this menu I can add to presets or I can copy and paste between images and it will 
it will do the thing that I'm after. Sorry, I just kind of, there we go. You just come over here where I'll stop making things flash red. Um, so I've got the face and the hair. And the thing that I want to do with this is come down and use one of the other new things, which is to reduce the lens sharpness optimization. I find lens sharpness optimization sometimes a little bit intense um, for skin. You know, it's it's a fantastic tool and it's great to have the option, but it's a little intense for skin. And in that case, I'm going to take it's probably I, I want to just soften that hair out a little bit, too. So I'm not really worried about those um, two items being bleedingly sharp. In fact, I would like to I would like to dull them just a little bit. I'm not going to even bother trying to show what that's done on YouTube. Have a play with that if you've not done it before. So I've added these two bits. We've got mask two, which is the face and hair. We've got mask one, which is dealing to the background. So if I now come to here and I right click and I go copy correction settings, I can then come to this image, which does not have any of that stuff applied and right click. And I can go to paste correction settings, paste all correction settings, give it a moment to think and it has done the trick. You can see here I've got my two sets of masks and because I've done in here with the um, with the categories it's doing those correctly in here I've got the category for subject so it's minusing the category and the only one that you have to be a bit careful with is the control point it will copy and paste but it might not go in exactly the right place, whereas the others will adjust if things are slightly to the left or to the right. Um, they'll adjust accordingly. The control point is a little bit more old school, and it's just going to go in exactly the same place. So, you know, perhaps, for example, you want to just come in and, and drag that over just a smidge. And that, my friends, I think is a super cool use of the local adjustments and hopefully some good techniques in there. Again, the important buttons that I have been finding uh, as I go are primarily number one, invert shape, because that is going to make it whatever it is, be a minus. And the other one that I use sometimes and is also super important is invert mask. So very, very cool. Have a good play. Also, this plus button when you want to do a new mask. That's, I mean, if, if I think about the things that I'm using time and time and time again, those are the things. So hope you enjoyed that. I'll just throw out that there will be a discount code in the description. So if you're a, a new purchaser to DXO products, you can get a discount for the next almost week. It'll be a 20% discount. After that, it will be a 15% discount. Um, but check that out. And please, if you don't mind, I would really appreciate it. There's also an affiliate link there. And I very much appreciate if you could use that as it really very much helps the channel out. Otherwise, I hope that's been helpful. I hope that you're all having a good play with this. Have fun. It's, it's really powerful takes a minute or two to get your bearings but once you do i promise you'll be off to the races with that i'll say thanks so much for watching and i'll talk again soon